what is the right size of a task when we are analyzing our list of tasks to see what we want to potentially eliminate or automate or delegate? And if we can't do any of that, then appreciate. So the, the EDA process, E-A-D-A, um, is how I, uh, well, how I recommend figuring out how to do less in your work and life and still have as good or better results and certainly more spaciousness so that you can um, <clears throat> add more meaningful things to your time. So um, so thank you, Antonio, for, for giving a couple of suggestions. One is, you know, one is sending an email to, to a client, uh, you know, is relatively small, uh, unless, of course, that email requires you to create a document or some other project that it's not really sending an email anymore. Right. But let's just say we're sending an email to update our client on a project. That's that's a relatively right sized project. Um, you could say, well, can I eliminate this? Well, no, probably not. The client needs an update. Can I automate this? Maybe because there's probably some way of automating it. Like you can somehow somehow update it. I mean, one example is if you share a Google document with a client and you add a comment to the Google document. Uh, they will receive a, a notification. So that's kind of an update. That's kind of an automation of, of sorts. Uh, there's other ways, but uh, can we can we uh, can we delegate it if we can't automate it? Maybe maybe someone on your team should be sending the update. Maybe. And then finally, if we can't do it, we have to appreciate. It. But another example Antonia brought up is um, uh, like a client proposal. Creating a client proposal can take many hours. Um, uh, you know, so that's a great example that where it's not a task anymore, but it's a project. A project loosely defined is a series, is a set of tasks that are grouped together into what's called a project. And uh, of course it's holographic, meaning um, every task can be said to be a project of tiny, tiny actions. And every project you could say is, is could be considered to be a giant task, right? So, but the key for using the EDA process is to break down every project into its component tasks or actions as much as possible. So for example, with client proposal uh, and Antonio or anyone else, if you wanna unmute to share your example, what does it mean for you? What, is, what, are, the, what are some of the subtasks of a client proposal? Um, Antonio, yeah, sure. go ahead. <laughs> I mean, yeah, just thinking about it now, if I break it down, there's generally the, the first bit, which is kind of just like planning, like just doing a bit of research, understanding a little bit more about the client, a little bit more about the context, reading over any material that you might have gotten. Um, and then there's actually kind of, in, in my case, it's planning out the process. I usually do a lot of kind of more design thinking projects. And so there's usually a pretty strong process behind it. So thinking out all the different steps in that process. Uh, there's figuring out pricing, there's finding images, there's <laughs> fixing the, because I usually do mine in, in, uh, in uh, slides as for proposals, so it's making them look attractive as well. That's usually less, there's editing. So yeah, there's, if I break it down, there's quite a few. That's really good. I mean, it's actually, it's really great. You've been able to put, break that down to me, even just off the top of your head, because I'm putting it on the spot here. And I just wrote down a few of this, these, these tasks. So you got research of the client, which if we run through the EDA process, we can't eliminate it. You have to actually know something about the client to make a good proposal, but you can possibly either automate. I mean, I automate, I immediately think about, um, well, I'm sure there's probably some AI tool. These, well, you could say Google is kind of an AI tool, but there's probably some AI tool that can like quickly pull together. Like, you know, if it's a company, particularly or organization, or I know you, you have clients that are like government, you know, agencies or whatever, like, like there's probably some tool that's like, here, here's here's a quick package about about who 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 this organization is, um, or certainly delegation. Do you need to be the one <laughs> doing the Google research or whatever database you guys use? Do you need to be the one doing it? Maybe not. Maybe maybe you pay a Fiverr, right? That's what I would do. I mean, Fiverr, F I V E R R. For those of you who don't know, it's a website for hiring freelancers quickly. Just the other day, for example, I was trying to put a spreadsheet together. I'm like, okay, there's a formula that's a little bit more complicated than what I know. So I paid someone on Fiverr in Pakistan $10. I, you know, their basic gig was $5, but I'll pay you 10. And they came up with a really nice formula, like it's just more complicated than I would have known to do something. And I'm like, 10 bucks? 
you know, and in Pakistan, that's like a really good hourly fee. That's like the hourly fee, $10 in Pakistan is the hourly fee of a senior corporate engineer, senior software engineer gets $10 US in Pakistan per hour. So I'm like, I'm paying that guy a good rate. He's self-determination, right? And um, anyway, so research is another good one. Go to Fiverr, pay someone five, $10, $25, whatever you want to pay. Um, and they're like, yes, I'm happy to do an hour, two hours of research on this company organization. You know, if it's public research, um, process planning is probably where, I mean, that's, that's your strong suit, Antonio. So literally it's probably where you add the most value and you probably should delegate it, but you could probably automate in some way. Let's talk about that. So process planning, I mean, you, you, Antonio, you, Antonio, you probably have some kind of template for, for a client proposal. There we go. So that in a sense is kind of automating it to some, some degree that you're automating it for your future self. Um, pricing, you probably have some template or spreadsheet, maybe that can help you. And that's part of the automation process, finding images, right? That can certainly be, uh, something that, that a freelancer could do. Although you might say, yeah, freelancers don't do a great job of it, or you might need to train someone when it comes to automating, when it comes to the EDA process, when you're doing the automation or, or, or delegation, right? Automation and delegation productivity experts say that you should be willing to spend, um, something like. 10 to 30 times how much time it would take you to do to figure out the automation or delegate or de uh, figure out the automation means you know figuring it out programming something to do it or delegation means training someone 10 to 10 spending the 10 10 if it takes something if it takes you 10 minutes to do something you should be willing to spend 100 to 300 minutes to train someone well to do it why because the one in the 300 minutes will pay off over time, you know? So that's an example of finding images. You're like, well, I, I do a much better job finding images. Sure. But if you have a team member or an assistant, you could say, let me train you. I, I find the images you find are not quite what I'm looking for. Let me show you what I'm looking for. Let me show you why that's not the right fit and why this is a better fit. You're, oh, you're using this database? Mm, let me show, you know, so that's an example. Uh, making slides, something you probably do really fast, but again, maybe an assistant could do it, the Fiverr could do it, at least the first draft of it, right? And then you could kind of put your finishing touches, editing, same thing, you know? So that's an example of where I'm really, thank you, Antonio, for, for giving us that example, because that is really, we, you, you could probably, if you're willing, again, to carve out the time, the 10 to 30X of any task to say, well, you know what, this is an investment in my future proposals, that'll make it quicker. Now, it might only take you five times to automate or delegate, but you know it'll it'll be worth it. So, I hope this is helpful, and um, yeah, looking forward to the continuing conversation. And thanks, Antonio, for mentioning that the EDA process eliminate, automate, delegate, appreciate is a really good team tool as well. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, you know it's it's actually harder to do it yourself because everything. <laughs> Everything seems important to you. Everything's like, ah, I don't want to take the time to figure out how to delegate, delegate this, you know? Like everything seems, when you're doing EDA yourself, it's like, well, I can't eliminate anything, you know? Like, it seems, everything seems so important. But when you're doing it with somebody else, like if you have a coach or, or like, a, like a business friend, uh, you should do it with each other. And if you have a team that's like, all right, folks, let's do this as a team. Like, what can we absolutely eliminate? You know, let's try, you know, let's, and, and uh, so thank you. Or what can we automate? Does anyone know how to do this? How, what can we delegate this? Sh sh you know, who should be doing this? Or maybe we should outsource this. So yeah, thanks.